Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome to each of the nominees. Judge Mahalchik, I want to talk to you about a case you've already discussed considerably, which is the Spanier versus Libby case. That's a case involving Graham Spanier, the former president of Pennsylvania State University, who was investigated, terminated, subsequently criminally charged for his role in covering up the child sex abuse crimes committed by Jerry Sandusky. The sentencing memo written by the prosecutors in that case, state case, noted that Spanier had, quote, shown a stunning lack of remorse of his victims. It further called for him to be punished for, quote, choosing to protect his personal reputation and that of the university instead of the welfare of children. It further highlighted that Spanier, quote, was the ad- ultimate decision maker when it came to reporting Sandusky. Your decision in that case was reversed unanimously by the Third Circuit. Is that correct? A three-judge panel of the circuit reversed my decision, yes. Unanimously? Yes. The Third Circuit concluded that, quote, under clearly established federal law, state courts have considerable latitude to rule on the meaning of statutes. Yet you construed the rule more narrowly than the state courts to Spaniard's benefit. Jerry Sandusky was an evil man. And Spanier, the ultimate decision maker, protected his own reputation at the expense of the children. Why did you deviate in your decision from clearly established federal law, particularly when it had the effect of protecting such a man? Senator, the acts of the crimes of Jerry Sandusky are beyond horrible. They are unspeakable, and as a member of the community and as a mother of two children, they are uh, the the worst nightmare for most parents. That was not absent from my mind when I was looking at the case before me. The issue before me was whether the petitioner, who I looked at and treated as I would every habeas petitioner that comes in front of me, received due process in state court. I determined that there had been a violation of his due process rights in the use of the jury instruction that the state court had, and the Third Circuit disagreed with me. The Third Circuit did more than that. Did the Third Circuit criticize your opinion for not only admitting relevant precedents, but also for not closely analyzing the case law that you did cite? I can't recall verbatim what the Third Circuit opinion said. Uh, there were, as I recall, there were three cases uh, involved in, in that case uh, in, in terms of precedent, and I relied more heavily on one of them than the other two. Do you recall the names of those three cases? I know one was the Bowie case. I can't recall the names of the other two. Well, here's what the Third Circuit said, quote, the district court cited Bowie and Rogers but did not examine them closely, nor did it men- mention Metrish. Now, I do find it a little bit amazing. You knew in this confirmation hearing you'd get asked about this case. Yes, Senator. Um, I I, I find it actually quite remarkable that for this hearing, you still don't even know the three cases the Third Circuit said were critical to resolving the issue of law. Senator, I reviewed 10 years of work in preparing for this hearing. I don't recall those three cases specifically. So you, you didn't have an inkling that you would get questioned and questioned pretty vigorously about a decision with egregious consequences that was unanimously re- reversed by the Court of Appeals? Did I have an inkling that I would be questioned about the Spanier case? Yes, Senator, I did. Let me ask you this. Did then Pennsylvania Attorney General and now Democrat Governor Josh Shapiro praised the Third Circuit's reversal of your opinion. I am, I don't know what his comments were following the issuance of the opinion. Well, I will point out that he submitted it. He released a press release, statement by the Attorney General Josh Shapiro on the U.S. Third Court of Appeals ruling reinstating the conviction of Graham Spanier, and you can read that, and he was effusive in his praise. 
There's a long and unfortunate pattern in this administration of Joe Biden nominating individuals to serve on the bench who have a repeated pattern of showing excessive leniency to criminals, of releasing violent criminals from jail, of releasing murderers from jail, of releasing rapists from jail, of releasing those who committed child sexual assault from jail. I don't believe doing so is in the interest of the American people. I think it is contrary to the views of the constituents of just about every one of ours. But nonetheless, that pattern continues and the consequences are deeply harmful. Congratulations to, uh, to all of the nominees. Uh, Judge Mahalchek, you remember a case called Yenser v. Potter County? I have a recollection that I presided over that case. I don't know if I recall the details of it. Okay, uh, and you were reversed, is that right? I believe that was a case that I issued. Uh, I was a magistrate judge in that role and in the referral role on it, and it was reviewed by the district court, yes. And you were reversed, right? I don't recall in that case if I was, if the report and recommendation was adopted in full or not adopted well, in the, full, the, but uh, yes. The, the higher court said you incorrectly analyzed qualified immunity and you incorrectly cited the 11th Amendment. Do you remember a case called Myers v. Clinton County Correctional Facility? I recall that case as well. And you were reversed in that case too, weren't you? I believe I was, it was adopted in part, yes. Um, do you remember a case called Dennis v. Sheridan? Yes, I believe I recall that case as well. And you were reversed in that case too? I believe that R&R &R was adopted, not adopted in full, correct, yes. Okay, but you were reversed? It was not adopted, in, yes, Is that by the, the same district thing as, as being reversed? It's a, it's a different... The district court declined to adopt the report and recommendation. The higher court said you were wrong. The district court disagreed with my report, yes. Yeah, okay. Do you remember a case called Shania v. East Pennsboro? Yeah, the Shania's are pro se plaintiffs who have brought a number of cases, so I'm right, not sure which right. one you're referring but to. I'm, yes. I'm just uh, uh, curious. You were reversed in that case, too, were you not? In part, yes. Okay. Do, do you remember a case called Spanier v. Libby? Yes, I do. Um, you, um, the president of Pennsylvania State University was convicted of covering up child sex abuse crimes. And uh, you let him go on a habeas corpus petition. And the Third Circuit reversed you, is that right? I directed that a new trial should be held with a, with a different jury instruction, and the Third Circuit disagreed and, and found that he, was, he had received the due process he was entitled to, yes. Well, the, the Third Circuit said you failed to cite, analyze, or properly apply the relevant case law. You were reversed, right? The Third Circuit reversed my decision, yes. Okay. Do you remember a case called Hassel v. Centric Bank? I vaguely recall that case, yes, Senator. You were reversed, weren't you? I believe the district court failed to adopt my op declined to adopt my op my recommendation. Okay. Yes. Do you remember a case called Ramsey v. Amtrak? Yes, I do. And the uh, higher court reversed you in that case too, didn't they? The district court concluded that I was correct in finding that he that the petitioner uh, did not pay a filing fee and where I had recommended that the case be dismissed, he granted the petitioner 30 days to uh, correct that. So you were reversed in part? Yes. Okay. Do you remember a case called McCracken v. Fulton County? Yes, I do. You were reversed in that case too, weren't you? I believe that was in part, yes. You remember a case called Bird, Bird v. Britain? I do. And were you reversed in that case? In part, yes. Okay. Do you remember a case? Whoa, I'm sorry. You remember a case called Allen v. Lackawanna County Board of Commissioners? I believe I recall that case, Senator. And you were sure. reversed in that case too, weren't you? I believe I was reversed in part in that case, yes. You remember a case called Daniels v. Capital One Bank? Yes. And I believe you were reversed in that case too? I believe it was, yes, I believe so. 
Do you remember a case called Downey v. Pennsylvania Department of Corrections? Yes, I recall that case. And were you re reversed in that case? Yes, I believe I was. Remember a case called called Rejean v. Wenzel Wetzel. I re I vaguely recall that case. Yes, sir. And were you reversed by our court there too? I believe that our report and recommendation was not adopted in full. Okay, I don't have time to finish this list. I mean, it's longer than King Kong's arm here. You've been reversed a lot. Um, in fact, you've been nominated before, haven't you? No, I have not, sir. Well, you, the, your nomination was talked about, and Senator Toomey refused to send in a blue slip for you, did he not? I'm, uh, not, I'm not sure exactly what happened. I know that this process has been ongoing for two years. Yeah, but you know that Senator Schumer, Schumer refused to even, thought you were so unqualified that he refused to even allow the Judiciary Committee to consider you. Isn't that correct? I do not know what Senator Toomey's reasons were. So. You never talked to Senator Toomey about it? I never discussed it with Senator And Schumer, you don't no. know anything about a blue slip being withheld on you? I do not know. You're under oath. I am under oath. And I know I, do, I did not speak with Senator Toomey about his reasons for not. Was Senator Toomey's concern that you were unqualified? Again, Senator, I did not speak with Senator Toomey or his staff about his reasons for not supporting me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As Mahalachik, is that right? Mahalachik, yes, yeah, Senator. Thank you. So you were a magistrate judge. Uh, the Spainer case, did I say that, Graham Spainer? Yes. He was the former president of Penn State. He was convicted um, by state court. And you granted a habeas petition. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, Senator. He uh, petitioned the court uh, to uh, seeking a uh, his conviction to be set aside and a, a new trial granted uh, due to a jury instruction uh, that was given by the state court, and that was his request. And you granted that request? I, after a uh, careful review of the law related to that uh, habeas petition uh, and the arguments made by the parties, I determined that the jury instruction that was given by the state court was in violation of uh, the petitioner's due process, yes. Did the Third Circuit overrule your decision? Yes, they did. How many times have you been overruled by higher courts? In my decade on the bench, uh, Senator, uh, I have issued over, over 1,500 written opinions and memorandum, uh, and memorandum decisions and reports and recommendations in civil matters and issued... Uh, Are all of those reviewed by higher courts? And then in, in addition to that, the over 1,000 uh, criminal uh, orders and decisions on release and detention, and they are all subject to review by either the district court or... Were, the, they, they, were they reviewed? They were not all reviewed because the parties didn't always seek review of yeah. them. And it, so I've been told that you've been reversed 31 times. Is, does that sound about right? That sounds about right. Of those 31, I believe at least two-thirds of them are only in part. Yeah. So... You were criticized by the court for not understanding the 11th Amendment applied to cities. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, there are not many of us here, so I'll just try to wrap it up. Um, uh, the 11th Amendment, amendment uh, applied to cities, not just states. Do you remember that case? I don't know specifically which case you're referring to, Senator. Okay. Uh, do you remember a case uh, where the court criticized you for confusing sovereign immunity and qualified immunity, the Potter City case? I don't remember that specific case either, Senator. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to each of you for being here and for your willingness to serve. Um, Ms. Mahalchik, I'd like to start with you, if that's all right. Uh, I want to talk about Lochner versus New York for a moment. Was that case correctly decided? And I'd love to know your reasoning as to why or why it was why it was or was not correctly decided. Senator, I, I believe that is still uh, binding uh, case law in it's our not. 
It, I, I, I'm sorry, Senator. I, uh, I, Lochner versus New York. Lochner versus New York. Yeah, no. It, I, so because that is no longer binding case law, I um, would stand by whatever the precedent of the Third Circuit and the Supreme Court is, and that is the appropriate standards and, and law to apply in any cases that come before me. Yeah. That's why I chose this one, because it's, it's dead precedent. It's not yes. around anymore. Correct. If you remember, this is the case where the Supreme Court invalidated some minimum wage, maximum hour laws passed by the state of New York. Yes, Affecting Senator. bakery employees. You, um, you still feel you can't opine on that, even though it's, it's dead? Senator, I think that it would be inappropriate for me to opine on it in the sense that what is binding and appropriate for me to apply would be the binding precedent of the Third Circuit and the Supreme Court at this point. Gotcha. Uh, it's unusual, and that's why I choose that case on occasion, is because it is dead letter. But uh, So it's disappointing that you, you won't get into it. Um, I hope you reconsider when I submit questions for the record.